Recently I did a video on <clears throat> early Mormonism and magical practices, uh, especially with Joseph Smith and his family. There's so much material that it can't just be covered with one video. And I was recently viewing someone else's YouTube video, which had um, a lot of very accurate material. However, the the title was uh, really defaming of most members of the church. Um, I would think anyone would find it offensive uh, for what it implied or actually stated about members of the church relative to the dark side practices, shall we say. <clears throat> However, uh, when I looked in the comments, there were a number of LDS people who were appalled at the material, it would seem, and claiming that it was all false. Actually, the material was almost all completely accurate from everything I've ever researched. And so, I'm going to do this with some additional material that... I've noticed here. Of course, here we're looking at the seer stone that Joseph Smith is said to have used for most of the translation of the Book of Mormon and has been hiding in the church vaults for a long, long time. But now the church has put this photograph out for all to see as it's come under so much pressure um, <clears throat> to be truthful about uh, matters in the church's history that have been hidden, obfuscated, rewritten, and basically covered up. So yeah, this is a uh, this is published on LDS.org. We can this is the seer stone. And you can see from below here where it came from. So, now I picked this photo up on a website that I'm going to take a look at because this, this gal has done a really nice job of assembling some very useful material for people who are interested in knowing about the um, <clears throat> early history of the church in regards to use of magical instruments. She's got a page on the magical stones. The video that uh, I was referring to that the LDS people were in apparent disbelief of in the comments saying this was false material when it actually wasn't. Um, although I think it was not right that they made the, the title what it was because it was inferring things that were not accurate at all about most LDS people. So we're going to take a look at evidence of magical practices by Joseph Smith, his father and brothers. Uh, we, we've looked before and seen what his mom had to say about it, admitting that they did practice the faculty of ABRAC or involved in other magical practices. So magic, masonry, seer stones. Um, this was all used by Joseph Smith long before this translation of the Book of Mormon business was occurring. And so we're going to take a look at some material regarding all these things. Here's a website I wanted to show here. Uh, DelaTaylor.com. She's got Eve out of the garden. And here's a page she's done. She just done a terrific job, I think, on her website. LDS quotes about seer stones. And here she's got references that, you know, are really good, really informative, and it's probably not that easy to... I can't get the type quite big enough here. Maybe this isn't so super mobile friendly. Um, although I... Got some photos I think I'll show. She she uses you know Richard Bushman, who wrote uh, Rough Stone Rolling, and the quotes that he's got, and you know D. Michael Quinn out of uh, 
early Mormonism in the magic world view, and though he was uh, attacked by people like Dan Peterson, who used the uh, character assassination uh, strategy uh, when he's with farms and so forth, you will find on her website here, I'm just going to go through so you can take a look, and um, I'm going to then go to look exactly what type of this material is. Richard Bushman, in his book Rough Stone Rowing, and he's a LDS historian in good standing with the church, explains, Joseph had discovered two stones, one in 1822 while digging the well at, with Willard Chase, a half mile from the Smith Farm called the Chase Seer Stone. The source of the other stone is uncertain. These stones were the keys that enabled Joseph to see things, as Lucy said, invisible to the natural eye. Emma described one as rather dark and so forth. That's the one we're looking at there in that photo we saw, I believe. Um, Joseph showed these to the Twelve. Of course, they've been in the First Presidency vault for a long time. And he said that every man who lived on earth was entitled to a seer stone that they're kept from most of us through wickedness. He said, Brigham Young quoted him. Anyway, well, the other video we showed, uh, Willard Chase was very upset that he couldn't get his stone back from Joseph Smith. It was on his property that was discovered. He let Joseph borrow it. Joseph would never give it back. Um, many quotes from that we looked at in the other video from uh, Emma Smith, David Whitmer, and Martin Harris, all stating that that, that was the seer stone that he used to translate the Book of Mormon. Since uh, Moroni took away the uh, the spectacles or interpreters supposedly that were originally given to him, which he did when the 116 pages were lost. Here Joseph Fielding Smith wrote, "The statement has been made that the Urim and Thummim was in the was on the altar at the Manti Temple when that building was dedicated. The Urim and Thummim, so spoken of, however, was the seer stone which was in the possession of the Prophet Joseph Smith in early days. This seer stone is currently in the possession of the church. Joseph Fielding Smith, Doctrines of Salvation. There you go. He was the church historian and, of course, an apostle and then later the president of the church. David Whitmer, one of three witnesses, describes the method of translation. Joseph Smith would put the seer stone into the hat, into a hat, and put his face, the hat drawing it closely around his face to exclude the light. And in the darkness, the spiritual light would shine. A piece of something resembling parchment would appear. And, <clears throat> and on that appeared the writing. One character at a time would appear. And under it was the interpretation in English. Brother Joseph would read off the English to Oliver Cowdery, who was his principal scribe. And when it was written down and repeated to Brother Joseph to see if it was correct, then it would disappear and another character with the interpretation would appear. Let's mix this in here. And the comments... Uh, on the video I was discussing uh, some fellow told another that the uh, had to do with a clock and so forth which maybe it does or maybe it doesn't but here's this uh, from witches of the craft website and yeah pentagrams looks like they're into them with witchcraft reason that's mentioned is because that video did show some shots of uh, Salt Lake Temple that does have pentagrams, inverted pentagrams on it. Back on Dealer Taylor's uh, site here, 
she cites where uh, Brigham Young here had uh, made a statement uh, regarding his uh, being shown the seer stone from Joseph Smith with um, the other of the twelve and so forth and then Joseph explaining that you know everybody should be able to have one but they are kept from them in consequence of wickedness, and most of those who find one make an evil use of it. He showed us his seer stone. So, there you go. Hey, the video also that I was discussing mentioned Brigham Young wearing a bloodstone around his neck. And, yeah, his own daughter uh, discussed that, and it's in a museum it shows here. She says, as I search more, she talked about the stone around Brigham's neck, and uh, he used it basically as a magic talisman, as protection. But Brigham owned a stone that he wore around his neck. It is located in the Museum of the Daughters of Utah Pioneers. This bloodstone that he, he wore especially when going to unknown or dangerous places. And dialogue, journal of warm and thought. It's all documented here. And this was from his own daughter. And uh, how this actually had come from uh, Captain Cook. Who gave it to someone in the... Who gave it to Brigham Young. And it had been used to heal someone, heal a child, of, uh, with its miraculous powers. And he took one and it handed down from father to son to in the people that he gave it to. Who apparently were related maybe to Brigham's wife here or something. Uh, it says, family of Thomas Brown. So, yeah, they were into magical practices. And he was the uh, president of the church. In the video, we also discussed Josiah Stoll that Joseph worked for, testifying in court in his behalf, in his favor, that he was uh, a good glass looker and he used a certain stone and so forth. So, we're not going to rehash that other stuff. That's an, a different video. I want to use new material here. So, LDS historical researcher Reed Durham, who was mentioned in that video that the uh, other good Mormon folk thought it was all a bunch of baloney and it wasn't. Okay, a respected uh, <clears throat> researcher made his presentation at the uh, symposium and uh, showed the Jupiter Talisman, which was purchased from Emma Smith Bidman family. In other words, Joseph Smith's widow. And, uh, you know, anyway, he had the table of Jupiter on it and all the magical stuff. And there's really a lot of, that you can study on that. And it's heavy-duty magic uh, that he was into. And that was, you know, on his person when he was killed, even. So when uh, Reed thought this was just masonry, it is. A lot of the magic stuff is involved with masonry. But when he made this presentation... Uh, <laughs> He didn't quite realize, apparently, what he was revealing. So, um, yeah, then he found, he just, he couldn't figure out what the Jupiter Talisman is until he found a magic book and traced it to where Joseph Smith, you know, to Manchester and so forth. And it had the very, t yeah, it had exactly what Joseph had on it, and it was all about magic. And uh, so, read uh Durham kind of got in trouble. Spencer Kimball came out and said he made him publish a letter saying he believed in Joseph Smith and and sorry for any concerns and misunderstandings that his speech caused. I think it was a conference where it was probably, I think it was in journal, uh, dialogue, journal of warm thought, and so forth. So, you know, he's a res respected guy and, and this is all well documented. And the more you read about the table of Jupiter and the magic it's pretty it's all about magic. Next up a story told by Hiram Brigham and David Whitmer of a magic cave in Camorra filled with the gold plates the sword of Laban and the plates. Deseret and Evening News printed David's testimony.